ancient civilizations, they utilized the materials available to them, wood, metal, fire, and stone to make some pretty creative weapons. But as simple as these weapons might seem by today's standards, don't fool yourself, some ancient weapons were extremely lethal. Alright, let's start this video. Here are the top 15 most effective ancient weapons. Number 15. Shuriken you might know this ancient weapon as a ninja star, but its technical name is the shuriken. The shuriken comes from ancient Japan, where it was used more for self-defense than for attack. The shuriken was also concealed, and it was used by the samurai. The weapon was made from heavy-grade steel and measured anywhere from 5 to 8 inches. It was also very light, at around 4 ounces. The shuriken featured a star shape with extremely sharp edges. Because it was light and small, it was used on exposed parts of the body like the eyes, face, and hands. Versatile, easily concealed, and lethal, the shuriken is easily one of the most effective ancient weapons in history. Number 14. The Iron Hua Okay, so this weapon looks a little odd, to say the least. In fact, at first glance, it looks more like a bizarre backscratcher than it does a lethal weapon. But in reality, the Iron Hua was no joke. The Hua, which translates as claw, was an ancient Chinese staff weapon. It featured a clawed iron hand on the end of a long pole. The pole was around 6 feet long and weighed about 18 pounds. The pole sometimes had a counterweight at the bottom, which also was sometimes used to bludgeon. The Hua was used to take shields away from the enemy. The claw could reach out and grasp the shields away, and once the shields were out of the way, the claw would then rip and tear at the enemy's face. The claw was also used to swipe riders from horses, so although the Iron Hua is a little strange looking, it was an extremely effective ancient weapon. Number 13. Irumi Few weapons can strike fear in the hearts of their opponents quite like the Irumi. Lethal and ancient, the Irumi consists of flexible steel blades. These blades are usually around 4 to 6 feet long, and given their flexibility, the blades are able to whip at the enemy. The Irumi is not for the faint of heart, as wielding this weapon takes quite a bit of practice. The weapon can cause just as much injury to its user as its enemy if it's not wielded properly. But for those who've mastered the art of the Irumi, the effort is well worth it. It's believed that this lethal weapon originated sometimes during the Sangam period, as early as the 6th century BC. It's highly effective, even against multiple attackers. The number of blades varied with some Irumi having upwards of 20 blades. Today, the Arumi is no longer used as a weapon, but it is still used in some fighting demonstrations. Number 12. Morning Star Flail The Morning Star Flail weapon might have a pretty name, but there's nothing pretty about the damage this ancient weapon could inflict. The Morning Star was similar to a mace, but these Morning Stars consisted of a handle, a chain, and a spiked ball on the end of that chain. To use it, the user would swing around the spiked ball to gain momentum before striking the target with a potentially lethal blow. However, because the spiked ball was on a chain, the user could lose control of the weapon and unintentionally harm himself. For this reason, Morningstar flails were most effective only when they were used by knights in full armor so as to mitigate the risk of self-harm. This Morningstar flail dates back to somewhere around the 14th century and could have several spiked heads. Of course, the more heads it had, the harder it was to use, but more heads also meant an even deadlier weapon. Number 11. Roman Scissor The Roman Scissor was an incredible and effective weapon used by Roman gladiators. The weapon weighed around 5 pounds, was around 18 inches long, and was made from hardened steel. The weapon had two parts. The first part was a long tube that functioned as protection for the gladiator's arm. The weapon part was a crescent-shaped blade. It was used by a specific class of gladiators called scissors. This class of gladiators usually fought another class of gladiators called the Retiaris. The Retiaris used a net-like weapon during battles, so the Roman scissor was very effective because it could slice through the net and kill the opponent. The unique shape of the Roman scissor also made it very versatile, as the gladiators who used it could block attacks and then quickly stab and slash the gladiators they fought. Number 10. Bachnok The Bachnok, which translates as Tiger Claws, and this lethal weapon was used in ancient India. It's believed that the weapon was fashioned after the five claws of a big cat, and as such, the Bachnok featured four to five curved blades. The weapon was worn on the hand, 
The blade and pinky finger fit in the holes, and the blade component of the weapon could be concealed in the palm of the hand. Sometimes part of the weapon on the knuckle was covered with gems or stones, giving the appearance that the user was wearing rings, making the weapon completely concealed. During an attack, the attacker used the blades to essentially rip through skin and muscle of their opponent. This weapon is most famous for its association with Shivaji, a Marathi warrior who used the Bakhnakh to kill the Mughal general Afzal Khan. Number 9. The Spartan Hoplon Shield It's hard to picture a Spartan soldier without the circular shield in hand. They were very famous for their circular shields called hoplons or aspis. The inner part of the shield was made from wood, and it was then covered in bronze to make it more durable. The shields were not light. They weighed around 30 pounds, which is a lot of weight to lug around during a battle. But the shields were also very effective. They were well worth the effort. They were held by a handle at the edge of the shield and was supported by a sturdy leather strap. This allowed the soldiers to move their arms around freely during battle. The shields were around 3 feet in diameter, and although they were effectively used for self-defense, they were also very effective as weapons. Spartans could use their shields to bludgeon their opponents because the shields were so heavy. Using their shields as weapons offered Spartans an element of surprise during battles, because the enemy was often caught off guard when the shield came crashing down. Number 8. The Chotel The Chotel is a famous and effective weapon that was used by ancient Ethiopians. It's believed that this menacing weapon originated in Abyssinia, and the earliest known people to use this sword are the Demotion civilization. The blade was semi-curved, which gave it a small advantage over straight swords. The unique curve of the Chotel allowed the sword to strike over any shields in its way and get to the vital organs of the opponent, like the lungs and kidneys. The Chotel was also very effective at ripping warriors from their horses. The blade was around 40 inches long, and it was double-edged. Over time, some warriors chose to specialize their training in the use of this weapon. Those who trained especially with Shotels were called Meshenatai. The sword itself was impressive, but often unadorned and held by a simple hilt that was usually made from wood or rhino horn. Number 7. The Kopesh The Kopesh was the weapon of choice for many soldiers in ancient Egypt. In fact, this weapon was so popular that numerous pharaohs are shown with one and the Kopesh has been found in several ancient tombs, including inside the royal tomb of King Tutankhamun. The weapon featured a thick, crescent-shaped blade that was made out of bronze or iron, but only the outside portion of the blade was sharpened, and the curve on the inside of the weapon was sometimes used to trap an enemy's arm or to pull away a shield. The weapon was about 20 to 22 inches long and weighed about 7 pounds. It's believed that the Kopesh evolved from the famous battle axe, and while it was widely used for a long time, it fell out of fashion around 1300 BC. Number 6. The Longbow The Longbow was a significant weapon during the medieval period, especially with the English. The origin of the Longbow was widely debated, but some historians believe it was actually invented sometime during the Neolithic period, as a Longbow made of yew was found in 1961 and was dated to around 2700 BC. However, when it comes to the Longbow's fame, it's the Welsh who were renowned for using this effective weapon. The Longbow gained prominence under Edward III during the Hundred Years' War. The king quickly realized the tactical advantage that the Longbow gave his men so he even ordered archers to practice with the bow on Sundays and holidays during the Hundred's Year War, days that were previously reserved for rest. The long bows were made from a single piece of wood, which made them very economical, although the process of making a long bow was a tedious one. Number 5. Warhammer Warhammers originated in Europe and the Middle East and were used by both cavalry and foot soldiers. The design featured a head and a handle, and they were varied in length from 5 to 6 feet. The longer versions were meant to be used by foot soldiers, while the shorter ones were primarily used by soldiers on horseback. Warhammers were sometimes used to topple a horse-mounted soldier by striking at the horse's legs. They could strike helmets and cause concussions, and later versions of this weapon included a spike on one side of the hammerhead. The spike was used to disarm an enemy's shield or the reins of a horse. The flat side of the hammer was used to dent armor while the spike part could pierce it. So basically, the weapon was used to first knock down the enemy with the blunt side of the hammer and then to pierce the enemy with the sharp side. There were many different types of war hammers, including the Maul, which had a long-handled hammer and looks a lot like a modern sledgehammer. 
the Lucerne Hammer, which featured a three to four pronged head with a very long pick, and the Bec du Corbin, also known as a horseman's pick, which featured a shorter spike and a hammer with a blunt face. Number 4. Battle Axe Axes, they've been around for a long time and are effective tools for a wide assortment of things. But where utility axes are used for things like chopping wood, battle axes had one sole purpose, to kill. Battle axes were an extremely effective ancient weapon because they were far cheaper to make than swords, they were highly versatile, and they were still very lethal. Battle axes differed much from utility axes, mainly in their weight. Battle axes were much lighter than splitting axes because they were made to slice through legs and arms as opposed to heavy materials like wood. Battle axes were very popular with the Vikings, and they came in a wide variety. Some could be wielded with one hand, while some required both hands to wield. They could also be thrown at an enemy. The blades were made of carbon steel or forged steel, and the Viking battle axe was light and easy to maneuver. This gave Viking warriors an advantage over their enemies, because they could quickly slice through an arm or leg. Battle axes were a highly effective weapon that surely struck terror in the hearts of anyone unlucky enough to be on the receiving end of its vicious strike. Number 3. Mace The mace was used for close combat and featured a handle with a menacing spiked head. The mace was not meant to draw blood like other types of weapons were, but was rather designed for bruising and clubbing an enemy. The head could be made of copper, bronze, iron, steel, or stone, and the handle was most commonly made of metal or wood. The head of the mace came in many forms, and they were really popular with peasant rebels and conscripted armies because they were cheap and easy to make. The fact that they were not designed to draw blood also provided a loophole for the clergy. Religious men were not allowed to draw blood, so by using a mace they could still fight and not break any religious laws. The mace evolved from the Upper Paleolithic Club with the addition of a more elaborate head. The earliest types of maces were knobbed. Flanged maces, which were capable of penetrating armor, came later. And although earlier versions of the mace that used a stone head were effective, the mace became the most effective when they began making the head out of metal, because the stone heads often broke. Maces could deliver a pretty good blow. Foot soldiers tended to use shorter maces, around 2-3 to three feet long, while cavalrymen used longer ones so they could strike their opponents from horseback. Number 2. Flaming Arrows The bow and arrow is an effective ancient weapon in and of itself, but when you light that arrow afire, you have one of the most effective weapons in history. The origins of arrowheads date back to around 61,000 years ago, so they're a prehistoric weapon. The bow and arrow was used throughout ancient and medieval times. They were used as military weapons as well for hunting, and their significance in both cannot be overlooked. But when fire was added to the projectile arrow, the arrow became an even more formidable force. Flaming arrows were used in both ancient and medieval times, and the earliest types of these flaming arrows had tips soaked in resin or oil. They were tied below the arrowhead and were used to set wooden structures ablaze. From there, the Romans created more sophisticated types of flaming arrows. They attached iron boxes and or tubes full of incendiary substances to the arrows. The arrows, though, could only be shot from loose bows because if the arrows went too fast, the flames would go out. This was problematic because it meant that the shooter had to get pretty close to the target, and by the time he did, the flame often went out before it hit. So another type of flaming arrow was invented. This time, the arrow featured a curved metal bar, which was like a small cage. The cage was stuffed full of hot coals and attached to the arrow. This way, the arrow could be shot from a further distance without the fire going out. These arrows were especially effective in setting things ablaze from a much safer distance. As you can imagine, flaming arrows were a great way to penetrate a city under siege, since the arrows could breach the walls and set things on fire. Flaming arrows are often used interchangeably with fire arrows, but they're not the same thing. Fire arrows were used as early as the 9th century, and they were the first form of weaponized gunpowder that featured a pouch of gunpowder attached to an arrow. Fire arrows were used in China and paved the way for the fire lances, which are the very first firearms. Fire arrows had a much larger range because they were propelled by gunpowder, and they can travel as far as a thousand feet. Number 1. The Spear Simple, effective, not just ancient, but prehistoric, can any weapon rival the spear? A spear is simply a shaft with a pointed head. 
It's a type of pole weapon, but its roots run deep. The earliest evidence of spears points to over 400,000 years ago. And spears are one of the earliest weapons in human history. It's believed that Neanderthals made stone spear heads, and evidence of wooden spears with fire-hardened points date back to about 250,000 years ago. Ancient civilizations like the Greeks, Roman, and Egyptians all used spears in combat. Eventually, shields were added to the mix, and a basic shield and spear called a pilum became the standard weapon of the Roman army from the 2nd century BCE to the 4th. When the Western Roman Empire fell, spears continued to be used across Europe. Some spears were designed for close combat, while others were designed to be thrown. As such, spears came in a wide assortment of length, style, and design. But at the base was always the same, a shaft with some sort of spearhead attached. The fact that spears were literally used for hundreds of thousands of years speaks to just how effective this seemingly simple weapon truly was. And although there are ancient weapons that look far more menacing and can inflict more damage than a simple spear, the spear is inarguably one of the most widely used weapons throughout ancient history. Which is why the mighty spear has stabbed its way into the top spot on this list of 15 most effective ancient weapons. Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.